Hello, hello. I am live. Let me pull back uh, the music a little bit here. Yeah, that should be good. All right, and I see myself. And I hear myself, so we should be good. Yeah, folks in the chat room, if you um, have a hard time hearing me, please let me know. So, um, yeah, good morning. Uh, good morning if you're joining us from the Americas. Good afternoon, uh, good evening for uh, the rest of the world. Um, my name is Sam Basu. I am a dev advocate um, here at Progress Software. And um, today is Tuesday. If you're in the stateside, um, we had a Monday as a holiday, so hopefully you had a good fourth uh, and you had a good, nice long weekend with your friends and family. Yeah, and oh, I see uh, in the chat room my good friends Ivana Dim and TJ Vanto. Always good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, so we are coming out of a long weekend and um, just kind of getting started with our day here. Um, so yeah, today is our uh, Tuesday, first day of the week here. So if you are new here to the stream, um, check out the schedule. <coughs> check out the schedule down, excuse me, down at the bottom. Um, we do stream just about every day um, on different topics. Uh, Tuesdays are Unities, Wednesdays are React and UI. Uh, Thursdays I do some XAML and Xamarin type stuff and Fridays we end with the chat show. Uh, so yeah, please come and join us whenever uh, your time permits. All right, let me uh, roll back my volume just a tad more. There you go. Okay, so first thing is you notice that I don't have anybody on this side of the screen because my good friend uh, Panayat Kankov, who joins me every Tuesday, uh, so he can teach me some uh, Unity, he's out today. Uh, he had a thing for his child, which is obviously higher priority. Um, so I'm on my own, which should be fun. Uh, you're going to see me stumble through every piece of Unity code that I write, but maybe that's part of the uh, joy of uh, building or kind of learning how to build games. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you're new here, uh, I am just getting started here uh, learning Unity. So um, if you're into this kind of a stuff, um, building for uh, desktop and mobile and uh, AR, VR, um, I, I find Unity very easy to kind of get into. So that's where I'm starting. So if you're new, uh, just like me, uh, start at unity.com. They have uh, stuff where you can go and get started. Essentially, you can uh, you don't have to pay anything. It's it's all free, um, and even like uh, for an individual level, once you get to the level of earning more than 100k in a year, that's when you start uh, paying Unity. But that's a good problem to have. Other than that, all of the tools of the trade, other than uh, all of the assets, everything else is pretty much um, free, and there's no barrier to entry. So yeah, get the bits, and um, essentially we are trying to script. Uh, our game a little bit with uh, C sharp, uh, so that's what we'll do. Now, uh, last week I'm going to start off exactly where I left off. So this this is the Unity Hub, and you'll notice that like I have not touched it in seven days. So we started off with a cart game, which was kind of one of the default um, learning experiences, learning routes that uh, Unity offers out of the box. So essentially, you have a racetrack and you go around the racetrack in a cart you can put uh, things that you can jump over you can change the colors it just kind of gets you used to um, the unity IDE uh, the unity hub um, IDE in particular and all of the different aspects of how you go about editing things in your game but it, it is a pre-built game uh, actually for you so we, we did that and we learned a few things I learned a few things uh, and then I started off a new project uh, and I just called it learning physics so I'm just going to load this up because it takes a few seconds to kind of uh, get all the assets and get things going. Uh, while it is going, I was kind of um, <clears throat> shooting in the dark last week because I had not looked up the documentation enough. Uh, so if you're into Unity, uh, there is uh, actually decent documentation for just about everything you can do in building your game. Um, like uh, getting assets in, getting 2D, 3D inputs, getting your, uh, getting to work with different types of graphics, physics engine, obviously, audio, video, animations, there's, there's a lot of help. The thing that I want to kind of dive into is uh, scripting, because uh, I am a developer and I would like to be able to control things in my game programmatically. Uh, and what is really wonderful here is uh, Unity works with C Sharp as a scripting engine. 
And uh, I do have some um, open questions um, that I will probably ask Pana next week when he joins me. Um, there are things I understand. There are some things that I'm still trying to wrap my brains around. Like how does mono come in? How does, why is every class that you bring in uh, as a scripting engine, why does it, or how does it implement mono behavior? So those are things I, I am still trying to understand. Um, but otherwise, I mean, the, the docs are pretty good to kind of get started. So uh, we're going to start here and I'm going to explore a few more things, but let's see if Unity actually opened up. Uh, yes, it did. Yay. I do not want to update the editor right now, so thank you, but good to know. Now, one other thing I did learn was uh, Unity obviously pushes out updates, right? So um, let me see. I think the, they had it here. Um, the latest is, uh, hang on, go back. It's 2019 point something. Yeah, I'm not seeing it right over here, uh, but it's um, it's some version of 2019.3. Uh, dot something. I think that's the latest, but I think I mean clearly they, they did push out one update. So one thing I have learned is you can actually have different versions of Unity, and you can have them side by side. Um, so coming from a .NET background, this is kind of similar to .NET Core, where you can have different projects in different versions of Unity. Um, but right now, uh, my learning physics game is essentially just um, the latest 2019 version, and that's what I'm starting with. Um, so this was uh, kind of a clean slate that I started off with. Uh, you'll notice that I have uh, a plane, and I just essentially dropped a sphere in it because I'm trying to learn the basics of moving things around and how do things collide how do things have gravity how do things have velocity and uh, then bring in the other things uh, about like other game objects uh, so that's where i am at now one thing that i was not sure was like how to bring in the scripting and i i, I understand a little bit more now but i still have questions uh, so uh, essentially uh, in Unity, you have the scene editor, which is all of the uh, components that make up your uh, your scene. Let me see, my music went too low. I would like a little bit of music in my ears, as I'm sure you would too. There you go. Okay, um, so in here, I have um, just the main camera, which comes by default, uh, it looks kind of up and then you can move it down and uh, focus on <coughs> individual game objects. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Uh, then we have light and we have the sphere and we have the plane. And then uh, this is my uh, scene editor. I can go into game mode. I have an asset store if I wanted to go and get some assets that I needed for my game. And once I click on a certain game object, um, this thing opens up and this is the inspector. This is actually very powerful. It lets you edit just about every property uh, that you can think of for a certain game object. You can rotate, you can give it lighting, you can give it uh, color and mesh uh, properties. Um, this rigid body, from what I understand, is essentially the physics engine that comes in that gives your uh, thing some mass and some velocity and some lighting uh, and gives it some gravity. And then we have scripting. And so the scripting part is uh, this thing underneath is the project structure and essentially just lives on your file system somewhere. And I added a script here and essentially once you add a script uh, like this, this one's called the sphere script. Uh, you can see it's showing you just a little bit of the C sharp that's in it. And then you essentially get to drag a script um, that you have added and associate that with a specific uh, game object. So that's how it gets going. And then I, um, I mean, you can open this up in any editor. If you don't have anything, Unity is going to try giving you something out of the box. But obviously, being a .NET developer, I bring in my editors. Um, I have Visual Studio and I tried Visual VS Code, which works just fine, but you don't get some of the intelligence, you don't get some of the uh, benefits uh, that you can from a full-fledged IDE. So Visual Studio actually works out well. So let me pull that up. And I think, uh, well, I, let me try to remember the trick that I did. So this one is the learning physics uh, project. So the thing that I had to do in Unity was in, uh, in your settings, 
Oh, great. Visual Studio also has an update, which I don't want right now. Okay, uh, that's my code. Okay, so in your settings, um, there is this external tools thing, and you can set the default uh, script editor to be Visual Studio. And you can uh, check or uncheck any of these things and open by file extension. When you say regenerate project files, essentially for, um, for Visual Studio to be able to understand what a game object is, and to be able to give you IntelliSense, it needs to know the context of what it is. So if I go look in my um, in my file structure, I'm not sure why that thing is so small. Let's make it bigger. Okay, so this is where I am, and this is the learning physics um, uh, project, and you'll see that uh, Visual Studio did, uh, let me zoom in, uh, Visual Studio did drop uh, these things, learning physics.solution and uh, the CS project files. So you have to let Unity regenerate the project files if you just added a script by default and then associate that with the game object, let it generate the solution file, then Visual Studio can just open it up. And between Unity and Visual Studio, I don't think you need to have any like bridge crossover. It uh, by default, Unity knows that those are the scripts associated with the game objects and it knows when you change the scripts, it's going to fire up uh, the scripts and, and you have those specific points where it needs to come in and uh, invoke your code and it just knows how to do that. So you can stay inside of Visual Studio all day and change your code and then when you run Unity in game mode, it just automatically picks up the code. So that's where I'm at. I did not uh, get too far ahead, so now is the time and I'm going to look at some of the interesting things that I see in docs and uh, try to bring them in into the game. So let's see uh, where we left off. So this is Unity. I have a sphere. I have a plane. I have nothing else. Uh, so let me uh, check the sphere again. Okay, so now I see all the inspector uh, things, which is good. So the thing that I did last time, so in Unity, this is the thing that like we uh, developers need to kind of maybe wrap our heads around is this is not uh, a normal execution of a program like the way we expect it does not have initialization it does not have like a main.cs thread it has essentially unity game engine running uh, that is running your game with all of the assets and uh, all of your scenes and then for each game object it has these scripting files which is why it's called scripting it's not actually the full execution and we don't need to worry about the full runtime of unity and how it's doing it it's just unity is going to call into your code at specific points of time so the start is a method that's called in when your first frame starts rendering uh, in your in your game and then update is called once per frame um, so there are some things I know that there are some things like I said I am still trying to figure out so this goes back to like how many FPS your your game has is it 30 is it 60 and based on that it's going to be called as many number of times to draw every frame essentially um, so I don't know exactly how the threading works out like if you put a breakpoint would you be hitting it only once per second no matter how many times you are rendering a frame so these are things I will um, ask my co-host Pana when he joins me uh, next time round. But essentially on update I was able to get a few things working so this one you'll notice that I'm catching the input uh, if it is a space bar then in, you, I can destroy the game object in which case the sphere is just completely gone we're just blowing it away we won't get anything back from it because it's it's gone from memory and then if it's a tab then I am actually bringing it back so get component i am getting the mesh render which is getting the component for that sphere the mesh render component which is rendering the sphere in our view and i'm enabling it and then disabling it uh, right so let's see if this is still working so i go into game mode i think i have to click inside and then if i hit the space bar it's gone and then when i hit tab it's back so you'll see that space gone tab back and i can do this all day so that's good so it is still working and it is exactly where we left off. Oh, hey, uh, Theon88, good to see you. 
Um, so folks, I believe if I'm saying this right, he is uh, my coworker who works on uh, some of our um, VR tooling, he's, he's the expert. So Dan, the idiot, good to see you. Um, sorry, we, I was supposed to try to get you on the stream, but uh, things were just late. Uh, I, I don't have you on uh, Skype. Uh, so maybe you can just hang out in the chat room and um, help me out. Okay, so um, what Dan is saying is breakpoints affect the frame rate as they stop the ex execution of the game. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because if I have a breakpoint, I'm literally waiting on it, so it will not render any more frames because it's waiting for me to render that particular frame. Okay, um, so what we had is still working, which is good. Now, what I want to do is get into some of the interesting things that I saw. Okay, variables and inspectors. So I realized that I can define variables in my scripting and those show up in the inspector itself, which is very nice. So this one here, I'm gonna just do copy paste because that's how professional software developers work. As long as we're understanding the code we're copying, we're good. Uh, actually, let me grab the whole thing. Now, nah, I have my start method. So I just want to see how this thing is going to work. So prior to this, I'm going to do that. And then I also have not ever tried the debug uh, dot log, which essentially I think is just a console window that it uh, points out some things in here. So I'm going to go in here just like they did and do that. Um, so if I build this, um, Will it pick up this new my name property in Unity? All right, let's see. Oh, it did. Oh my God, this is quick. I didn't have to even like, I just saved the file and it picked it up. This is pretty sweet. Okay. So my name is Sam Not Wise. And if I hit play, Well, look at that. Look at that right there. So I'm alive and my name is Sam Otwise. It does show. So they're not lying. Yay. Okay, so that's pretty interesting that the moment you uh, add a variable, since we are doing it public, it knows that it's a public property of the component itself and it just like shows it. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so that works. Um, Controlling game objects. We did a little bit of this. Oh, no, this is interesting though. This will get into rigid body. Uh, okay, okay, let's get into this. So rigid body essentially is the physics engine that um, that Unity comes with. And essentially our uh, sphere does have a rigid body, uh, which is this one it has a mass it has a gravity and so on so we can change it so if i can get a handle on the rigid body right here i can do that on start right and notice how uh, visual studio is picking up uh, the intelligence because it, it is a part of the solution so it knows that it's it's tied to unity engine it knows the execution. So that's my rigid body. And I can change the mass of the object. Okay. Isn't this wonderful? Me just copying and pasting documentation code. But I'm learning. Hey, I'm learning. So if I do this, um, like how does it know to change my mass? I said, I suppose like because I am inside my my game object inside my scripting. So the rigid body refers to the rigid body of my component itself, like my game object itself. So essentially this get component is able to get components that are tied to my game object. And I think it can actually go get some other game objects uh, stuff as well, which is gonna be fun. Like when you have like multiple game objects in which I want to add like multiple things and have them collide or maybe position them relative to one another, do the transforms. So I think the get component will be able to get stuff like that. Okay, so <clears throat> the mass property obviously is the mass of the object. Uh, what does the F mean? 
Uh, so just a floating number, I suppose. Uh, I don't know why we had to just call it 10F. I mean, shouldn't it be a decimal um, by default? I don't know. Okay, so we gave it some mass, but what does that do exactly? The next feature that's not available is the possibility of calling functions. Oh. So now let me check this. Like I changed the mass of this object to 10. Now does Unity pick it up? No, not yet. So it will programmatically at runtime, we are setting it once it's in start. So it has no way of knowing obviously that I set it. But what was nice is um, it was able to look into a public property and expose that as uh, a thing um, on a property on my component. Hey, we Giorgio, good to see you. Good to see you. Wait, are you Giorgi? Like my friend Giorgi? I don't know. It's the wide, wide internet. Could you could be anybody? Okay, so um, no. Okay, well you can still be my friend. Yeah, I just know uh, a Giorgi that's a very good friend of mine. Uh, so. Um, I changed the mass, but then apparently I can add a force um, and vector three up. Okay. Folks who are just joining the stream, I'm copying and pasting code, trying to understand how am I supposed to work with game objects and scripting. But again, I mean, this is a nice experience. I can, I can do this all day. I can stay in Visual Studio. I can write C Sharp. And when I fire off, the game engine just calls into my code which is nice. So add a force to the rigid body. So what does this do? Vector three. Uh, so it's a representation of three vectors and points dot up. Okay. Can I do other things like, Ooh, angle cross distance down forward. Nice. Oh, I can move. I can move like this. Okay. Move towards. I see. Okay. Let's start with the basics. Now, what is this up times 10 F? What does that mean? Um, so wherever like you are and just move up 10. So I think it goes back to maybe um, the transform. So this sphere right now is sitting on X, Y, and Z is zero, zero, zero. So if I do an up of 10, would it just like shoot up 10 times? Let's see. All right save and we did this on start so okay maybe we, there, there was a little bit of an elevation right i thought i noticed it let's let's bump it up um 100 all right no that didn't do anything uh, Dan is saying this is the same as the new vector three. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So X, Y, Z. Um, so you're changing the Y uh, and changing the coordinates of it. But this one did not actually work for me. Uh, so what am I doing wrong? Um, like is the F messing up something? Because we should, it's, we should, yeah, I think I saw it just a little elevated. Why can I not have it like way up here? Let me stop this. And is the F needed? Like, can I just do this? Okay, it is rising just that little bit. Okay, so Dan, I'm gonna follow your advice. If we set the force in the update, we are probably going to move the ball every frame instead of once. Oh, 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 I see. I see the thing. So this thing is being added here in start. So it's only doing it once. But I mean, still, I would have expected that it would change it based on the Y that it has. So let's copy that down and Let's do this. Now, 300 maybe a little bit uh, too much. So now I'm curious here. If uh, if I do this, oh, now it doesn't know what rigid body is. Now, can I do this outside? 
Uh, sure, yeah, I can. Oh no, now it doesn't like a bunch of things. Uh, yeah. Non-static field method property. Yeah. Okay, so that's not a good idea, but should I have to get the rigid body over and over again for for the update and the thing? That doesn't sound right. Okay, but just for the sake of testing this. So now, uh, if I do this in the update, um, what Dan is saying, like we're going to do this every frame. So every frame is going to keep going up. Like this, this is going to go up to infinity, right? Uh, we may assign it in the start, but we keep the RB field outside. Okay. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, my bad. I see. Okay. So we can get rid of this. Okay. So I'm curious, like, what this is going to do. Okay, I saved it. Go. Okay, it's not moving up. Because every update, doesn't this mean like every update change your thing by 10? It is going up. See, the Z is going up. Huh. I don't know what that means. Okay. So I might actually do what... Um, Mm, what uh, Dan was saying in the chat room here. You know what? I have a fun way of bringing out, so not everybody has to look at the chat. I have a fun way of bringing out the chat and highlighting it, so I have exactly the thing that I'm about to write code on. I have it highlighted. It would help if I do that. Let's see if I can. There you go. So if I do show, there you go. I have Dan's um, message highlighted. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so instead of doing this um, new vector, can I do? Well, this is adding a force, so hmm. we may use, okay. I see, I see. Okay, so I'm going to try to follow. Oh, you're doing jump and force mode impulse. Ah, you're having more fun. You're getting ahead. All right, let's do that. Let's do that. And I need to show that. There you go. So the chat room, uh, the video can actually see what you are telling me to do. All right. Hang on. So I'm not sure why this one actually did not work. Maybe like the up is setting it to the Z instead of the Y for some reason, because the Z was updating, but the uh, Y was not. So I'm going to do what uh, Dan is asking me to do. Uh, so rigid body dot add for oh let's look at that explosion force force at position relative force relative torque torque and interesting so add force has things so it has up to four arguments so you can take just a force or you could do force mode you could do oh you could just set xyz and then for oh and this is interesting hang on so i can set um, I can set just X, Y, Z. All right, hang on. Now it needs to be a vector, right? Uh, no, hang on. Let me do what, um, Oh, this is uh, so it is a vector three and 
you're saying we'll do a zero and then we'll do a jump what is a jump it doesn't like what a jump is so then uh, maybe it just needs uh, more of the physics engine um, built in so it doesn't know what a jump is but let me see what this uh, essentially means. If I do a 300 zero, so does this mean I'm essentially asking it to add a force? Why does it not like vector three? Oh, I see. Um, needs jump as a variable, yes. It just did not know what a jump was, okay. All right, add force vector three dot up. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. So we're going to move it up um, by twenty factor, and force mode. What is force mode? Dot impulse. I'm curious now. Force mode is to specify how to apply the force using rigid body add force. Okay, okay, yeah, vector three dot up needed to be jump. Okay, perfect. See, I'm learning. So you can assign things so you don't have to keep on saying vector three, vector three. Thank you, Georgia. Um, okay, so what would this do? So it would jump on impulse. Only one way to find out. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, it went straight off on an impulse. All right, all right. Um, now, since we are doing this here, it's probably just, um, it's just keep on doing it every frame, right? So it's just going to shoot off. All right, let's do it there. All right. So, uh, if I do it here on startup, then it should just jump up uh, 20 times and only do it once, hopefully. You see that tiny jump? Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if there's like a... So, I, I get this one, but I'm, what I'm trying to do is just have the ball have the sphere start up at a certain point and not just keep on doing it over and over again um, so let's do this one here again because this one does take an x y uh, z maybe we assign a button to do the job in the update yeah 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 get key yeah we're doing that update so we already have those things uh, so I can move this down here and that'll that'll do it. So if I hit a space um, instead of doing this, I can definitely do that. And I'm going to turn this guy off and this guy off. So when I hit space, it'll just rock it off. Come on. Okay. I'm in the game mode. I hit the space bar. Oh, this is fun. This is, I love it. I love it. Look at that. So if I hit it once, it just jumps up that 20 times. It's, it's why this is, this is fun. But then if I keep it pressed, then it's, it's firing that update on every um, frame and it just keeps on going up. Look at that. Well, no, I cannot keep it pressed. I have to just keep pressing it very quickly because I think, I don't know, like, Dan, do you know, like, what's the default FPS of a game that you begin in? And I mean, is there a setting we can change? Because I think it's it's trying to do it in, like, maybe 30 times a second. So if I keep pressing space, like, over and over again repeatedly, it keeps going up. So, like, I can do this. And it has gravity, so it falls. Yay! I'm learning. This is fun. This is fun. Let me see. Um, does the game have an FPS anywhere? Sprite uh, masks, blah, blah, blah. 
audio. I don't have any audio. What is this? Oh, tools. I don't want tools. Okay. So if I turn this gravity off, right? Oh, my hooray emotion is still up. I'm excited. I'm getting things to work for the first time. What do you expect? All right. Oh, it just went off. Because it had no gravity and we added a force to it. This is excellent. So see what happened here, folks? Um, when we fired off the game, we did nothing. No, we actually did do something here. So let me let me comment this out. But essentially, here's what happened. Like on um, on the startup, we added uh, a force impulse to go up, and we didn't give it gravity, so it went off. And if I comment this line out, if I forcing it to only do the thing when I press a button, will it keep on going up or will it just stay? Let's find out. But I think like if it once escapes the view, then it'll just keep on going because. It has nothing to fall back on. Oh, <laughs> see, this time I only had to hit it once. I had to hit the space bar once, and it just kept on going because it just has no gravity. This is excellent. Excellent use of physics. Now, this may be elementary to folks who are doing Unity for years. This is new to me. We have never had like a physics engine that you play around with, or at least I have not. Um, okay. Uh, chat room Dan is saying there's a static property for limiting the FPS okay okay I just don't know what that is we'll find out some other time um, <clears throat> if, if you have it um, handy uh, somewhere in the docs please point out to me and I'll be uh, happy to play with it okay this this is fun this is fun uh, let's see what else um, accessing other game objects yes we I want to get into that but before that I thought I was I was seeing some fun stuff here. Uh, Coroutines. Um, so this kind of gets into the thing that we just experienced, which is like how often is the thing called in your update? So I'm going to read this out because I think this is super interesting. So when you call a function, it returns to completion before returning. So the Unity game engine comes in, calls your update, and it gets right back because once it's done, it has to paint the next frame and over and over again. So this effectively means that any action taking place in the function must happen within a single frame update. A function call cannot be used to contain a procedural animation or a sequence of events over time. As an example, consider the task of gradually reducing the object's alpha opacity value until it becomes completely invisible. So what they have here is a fade, uh, which essentially takes a float uh, calls it 1f and until it is going from 1 all the way down to 0 so every step it's going to decrement that by 0.1 and it's going to use the color of the material and render that material color so wait a second what oh the a property what is the a I don't, don't know I'm going to copy this and, and see what what that does so we have um, we have a thing called for fade because I mean uh, we can do a lot more with physics like we can get into collisions and things like that but I want to just see I'm understanding like the framing uh, interval of how this is working okay so it does not know what a render is this is looking for the mesh renderer I'm guessing okay uh, can I just say var? And if I do get component, mm -hmm. Does that even work? No. Can I understand? Oh, okay. Can I do this? Yeah, apparently I can. 
Oh yeah, yeah, thanks Dan. I just figured it out while you were typing in, in the chat box. Yeah. Okay, so essentially this is the way for us to grab the renderer that's putting our game object into the frame, into the mesh, uh, into the plane, I suppose. And then we're taking the renderer and changing the material property of it and then the dot color property of it. Uh, what does A mean? Oh, A is the alpha. Okay, geez. Could be a little easier if you spelled it out. Um, so this color is the Unity Engine color. This is not the C Sharp color. Hey, I see a few follows go out. Thank you for the follow. Um, okay, so this fade method is meant to essentially just slowly fade down the object or, or the color of my sphere. So what is my color of my sphere? It's nothing right now. Um, can I give it a color? Element zero material default. No, that's not the color. Where is the color? Oh no, my sphere doesn't have a color property. Uh, do I have to add something to the mesh render? Uh, nope. What does this mean? Hmm. Lighting probes. Hmm. If anyone knows in the chat room like how to get the color thing for uh, your game object, let me know because I'm not seeing it. Okay, we may create a new material asset in the assets and assign it to the sphere. Oh, okay. So by default, it just does not have a color. How do I create a new asset? Okay. Create. Oh. Material, probably, right? Okay, so I'm going to say sphere color. Oh, I see. So I just did not associate that up front. Now, um, for me to associate this with the sphere, can I? Should I just drag it? Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you, chat room. Create a new material asset, and then we'll be able to specify the color. Uh, the albedo color may be changed now. Drag and drop the material to the sphere. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you, folks. All right. OK, I'm going to select that. Doesn't like it there. Oh, there you go. I can just do it on the game itself. Yay. Now it gave me a sphere color. Is that coming from this guy? Probably. Yeah. Oh, so the sphere color is just added here as, eh, I see that is pointing to the material itself. The material is below the inspector. Below the inspector. Ooh. Hang on. So, oh, I see. So I can choose the material itself and then change all of the properties. I see. Okay. All right. So that's this is the color of my sphere, right? And it is gray. It's not. Oh, is this the kind of thing where you have to point to like a specific part of the screen and it becomes that color? Okay, so, all right, I just made it red, I suppose. Okay, and then if I go back to the sphere, it should be red. Let me, let me try this. Yes, thank you. Thank you, folks. It is red. Yes. Okay, so this is funny, like, so in... Um, in OSX, in, in particular, I'm on a Mac, um, you, you have a specific um, thing called, uh, what was it called? The color, digital color meter. That's what this is. So essentially you can point to any part of the screen. It gives you the RGB of the screen. So uh, it must have given me like a floating window that never showed up um, within Unity. It could have been like a side, like a background window, but essentially you can point to a part of any pixel and it'll give you the color of that pixel. Okay, so um, we have that, and now we are going to try to fade that color. 
but uh, as it stands the fade function will not have an effect you might expect because it is trying to do that over a sequence of frames and if we just add that to a single update it's not going to do that um, so how the function will execute its entirety within a single frame update so it will immediately go from being red to just disappear, right? Which is not what we want. We want it on every frame to be slowly disappearing. It is possible to handle situations like this by adding code to update function that executes the frame on frame by frame. So now we're getting into a mode where we will write some code that will be executed uh, on each frame, but not in its entirety. Code routine is like a function um, that is similar to pause execution and return control to unity. Oh, but then continue where it left off. This is nice. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is interesting. That that yield return thing, I think, is what's what's doing it. So I won't do this fade then, right? I will do this. Oh, it, it lost the renderer. That's fine. We can get the renderer back. Okay. So, um, why does it need to be an IE enumerator? And then it's doing this funky thing of yield return null. What does that mean? Okay, uh, it is essential that a function be declared of the type enumerator. Why? And with the yield return statement included somewhere in the body. Okay, I get it. So when I say yield, essentially we are saying bailout. Don't do the rest of the for loop. So, but how would it remember like where it left off in the last frame? The yield return null line is the point at which execution will pause and be resumed in the following frame. So how does like Unity know if I'm doing this, like what is the value of this FT float so that it can reduce the color? Like between frames, is it keeping track of the memory? Like it's not garbage collected yet? Uh, and this may be interesting, like does it do garbage collection after every frame, which I don't think it probably does because that will be a very expensive thing to do. So I think it's still held in memory and it just like when I say yield, it knows that I have to bail out of this, go back to the Unity engine and then come right back when I see the next frame being painted. Okay, uh, right, so to set the core routine, you need to set this function, okay. Okay, so essentially I can do Oh, I had, I had an end if already, okay. Let's do else if input dot get um, key down. All right, um, key code. Let's just do like F, like the word they were saying. So F for like a fade. So we'll do that. Oh, it doesn't like that. Is it capital F? Key code F. Okay. All right. No, that's too much. Just one. That's what I'm trying to give you. Key code F. Yeah. All right. And now if I do a start coroutine fade. So now it knows that on every update, if I'm to hit F, it'll start this routine. Oh, now this is interesting because this is also not doing it on every frame update. It's only when I hit the key code F, it'll start fading. Is that all we need? You notice the loop counter in the fade function maintains the correct value over lifetime of the core routine. In, in fact, any variable or parameter will be correctly preserved between yields. Oh. So is it only maintaining the variables that are inside the yield or, or inside that method and does it destroy all of the other ones? We'll see. By default, the coordinate is resumed on the frame after it yields, but it's also possible to introduce a time delay. Yeah, we don't want a time delay now. Let's try this. Let's try this. Um, okay, save this. 
go to Unity and do that. Okay, so I'm going to hit F. Now F also does a focus. Am I doing anything if I keep hitting F? I am not doing anything. Now do I have to hit a capital F maybe? Uh, no, it's not liking it. Okay, so something about the co-routine did not work. Um, <clears throat> if the key down is key code F, is it mess getting messed up based on this? I mean, I can change it to. Oh, come on. I can uh, how about caps lock so that way I just know that it's not messing up on the F okay start go reading fade and then it goes in here okay uh, I think that's all I need okay then in the chat room is saying I believe the material may need some adjustments to support transparency oh what adjustments let's see Source metallic alpha. Hmm. Rendering mode is opaque. Do you know then off the top of your head if it needs to be like transparent? Like that? Because I don't know what the fade and the cutout and the opaque mean. Okay, so if I do. Uh, transparent let's see what it does okay and it's not quite doing exactly what I want and also hitting caps lock again and again is not fun uh, okay, I can hit a comma all right um yeah i think uh, i said that to transparency yes how about i set a breakpoint is the world gonna blow up if i set a breakpoint on a core routine let's see well then the thing is if i set a breakpoint here like i cannot fire it up from visual studio let's see Okay, I said comma. Oh, there it is, it's doing it. Ah. Okay, I never hit my breakpoint, which may be a completely different story, like why I'll have to learn like exactly how to hit a breakpoint uh, and associate Visual Studio with the running Unity engine, so it knows. But it did something. Um, we are able to get a fade, but then it's not like gradually fading. You have a button in Visual Studio and debug button. Does that work? It does have an attached to Unity thing. Okay. How does it know? This is pretty magical that it knows how to put Unity in game mode. I think it already was in game mode. Okay, let's stop that again. Stop that. Okay, nothing is in game mode. But then if I hit this, it doesn't look like it puts Unity in game mode. Maybe something I have not quite right. You need to press it to hit the breakpoint. Yeah, I, I did that. It is attached. But I, maybe I hit the play again and then it will attach. Okay, now we are in play mode. And if I hit a comma, yes! Success! Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for... <laughs> I mean, it's been like 20 years of doing professional software development. I get excited if I can attach to a debugger and I can hit a breakpoint. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so thank you. Um, so, 
Okay, we start at 1, great. And now it's 0.9, so it is doing it. It is doing it again and again. 0.8, okay. So it is doing it. And then eventually, if I let it go, I think like this is the max that we are seeing. Now what is interesting though, like I did not have to keep hitting F though. So how is it invoking my method? Because every frame, is it not supposed to check if I'm hitting F? Uh, chat room, you now hit play in Unity. Yes, thank you, thank you, I figured that out. Um, so you have to kind of attach to Unity and then hit play in Unity, okay. So this is working, but it's not quite working exactly the way I would have envisioned it to work because every frame we are stopping there we should be checking to see if i'm hitting comma and then call into fade but looks like it's just calling into fade over and over again um but maybe because like this yield thing the way it works is it just returns the next time you come back into the update um it's not waiting for me to check this um key code it just automatically knows that I had called fade once and then incrementally I have to keep on calling that method or come right back to the method after every update or on every update. Okay, so that makes sense. So now if I if I go in here, uh, I'm going to play mode again. What happened? Okay, and then if I hit an F, no, I hit a comma, it goes into transparent. So I think this is the as transparent as a sphere will get from starting from red. So incrementally it is uh, pulling it down uh, to that. Okay. So good to know. I, th I think I might need to investigate a little bit more or just kind of for my understanding, like what does this yield do? Like how does it save the state? Because this is now we are getting into like a state machine. Like how much of it will it remember? Where will it actually start um, uh, processing when it comes back on an update? Um, Dan is saying, we may try the second option with wait for seconds. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. So they did have that other option of wait for seconds. By default, the core routine is resumed on the frame after it yields, but it's also possible to introduce a time delay. Okay. So what does the null do? Null is just uh, just return right away as compared to this one. Okay. Uh, this this F thing is it's, it's funny like the way Unity is handling floats. Like it, it, it's requiring us to do an F everywhere. Um, okay. Wait, where am I? Unity. Okay, do that game mode and then i hit the comma once ah you're right you're right rainbows rainbows for you then thank you um yeah so essentially what uh this is doing is it's handing it off to the core routine to say go yield this but to wait like 0.1 f seconds before you do the yield and wait or other way around like either yield after 0.1 seconds or when you come back into the update the second time round just do it after 0.1 so you slowly see the fade happening perfect perfect okay um oh wow <laughs> i have already spent an hour and that's all that i had planned to spend i have to get lunch out uh, for my kid because uh, everyone's home, everyone's having fun. It's it's a lot to juggle for uh, all of us, but it's the reality. And um, hopefully, you and your family are staying safe. Um, yeah. So Dan is saying skip updates until 0 0.01 seconds have passed. Okay, perfect. That's interesting. So you oh, so essentially it skips the updates altogether. So if if we did an eel, like what if we wanted to update other things, but just not this transparency? It's interesting that it kind of skips the whole update 4.1 seconds okay well uh, definitely things I can I can look up so as you saw like I am just literally starting out there is just so much here to do uh, I definitely want to get into the collisions uh, between game objects I want to get into how I can maybe have like a sphere and uh, something else and I can uh, throw the sphere into the other thing and then see how that 
works out. Uh, but this is this is a lot of fun. I, I am learning a lot about how just the physics interaction goes in Unity, and this is a lot of fun. I, I am enjoying the documentation and um, uh, Leon88 and uh, W. Giorgio, thank you so very much. I love you for helping me out. Thank you for taking the time to just kind of hang out with me. Um, this is definitely a learning experience for me, and hopefully the rest of you in the chat room, you had fun. Um, yeah, I plan to go an hour each uh, Tuesday to learn Unity, and um, next week we'll just take off from exactly where we left off. Okay? Alright, so that's it uh, from me for this Tuesday. I will be back on uh, Thursday, but uh, tomorrow if you have time, come and join us here in this channel. Uh, call it live. We'll have some React and, and UI stuff with CSS from my uh, from my good friends here. So until then, um, I appreciate all of you. Uh, we love you. Thank you very much. And stay safe, stay healthy, and be productive. Okay. All right. Thanks. And bye for now. <laughs>